Hi and welcome to this week's edition of the Pool Guy Show. Today I'm going to talk to you about the pressure side and return side cleaners. I did a podcast a few weeks ago on suction side cleaners and I said I would be back to do one on pressure side and return side cleaners. So today I'm going to go over in detail everything you need to know about a return side pressure cleaner. And this episode is brought to you by Riptide Pool Vacuum System. This is a great way to get large debris off the bottom of a pool if you have a pool service route or if you're a homeowner. You can learn more about the Riptide Vacuum at riptidevac.com. And this episode is also brought to you by inupools.com. They've been helping pool owners find the right parts since 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have your parts delivered right to your door. You can visit their website at inupools.com. So let me start by describing what a pressure side cleaner is. It's basically a cleaner that uses a separate booster pump that powers it and it cleans all the debris off the bottom of your pool. You'll notice that these cleaners look different than a suction side cleaner. They have a debris bag on top and they have a larger opening on the bottom. It is also what's known as a return side cleaner. This particular cleaner uses the return jets in your existing pool equipment without a booster pump. You have to have one and a half inch threaded return lines to use this particular cleaner. I'll go over both of these in detail so you kind of know the difference between them. So the pressure cleaner usually is installed when you have your pool constructed. The booster pump has a dedicated line that is for the cleaner only and it uses a 3 4 horsepower booster pump. This water will shoot through this line into the cleaner and it's this jet of water that propels the cleaner on the bottom. There's Venturi on, in the cleaner and this is what pushes the water up into the bag and the debris gets sucked up in there kind of like a garden hose um, and you have like a bag and that's what's shooting the water up and this propels the cleaner also and also traps all the debris in the bag so there are several manufacturers that make the pressure side cleaners probably the best known is the Polaris made by Zodiac Pool Systems then you have the Pentair Legend made by Pentair of course and then they make a racer cleaner that's kind of a high-end pressure cleaner and then Hayward um, they came out in the market with the Phantom several years ago discontinued it and they relaunched their pressure cleaner with the Trivac 500 line and I have a couple of those on my pool route I'll go over all three of the major manufacturers in detail a little bit later in this podcast you can also find generic versions of pressure cleaners online but I would definitely recommend sticking with the well-known brands and Polaris being the most well-known. So let me give you some of the um, advantages of the pressure side cleaner. The first one is that it works off uh, of a separate booster pump, so it's not using your pool's system, not using your pool skimmer like a suction cleaner. If you don't have a side port, it will use your pool skimmer, which will reduce the ability of the pool to skim the surface. So this one works off of a dedicated pump and it has a large debris bag on top. You can also get a fine mesh bag that will trap sand and silt and this is really good at picking up large debris on the bottom of your pool. The opening is a lot larger than the suction cleaner since it's not using the the suction of the pool can have a larger opening and these are really great for pools that have a lot of debris on top of the pool. Another great thing about these cleaners is that you have to only run these cleaners about two hours a day in your pool. They move very rapidly around your pool Again, they're powered by a 3 4 horsepower booster pump, so you kind of get the idea of how much water pressure is moving through these cleaners, and they clean your pool really rapidly. So those are the pluses on those cleaners. They pick up large debris, they work independent of your system, and they only have to run for two hours. And since they're only running for two hours a day, they're very long-lasting cleaners. The parts last a very long time. Uh, if you put a brand new one in your pool, you figure you got at least three or four years before you have to start putting any kind of parts on these cleaners because, again, you're only running at two hours a day when your pool may be running eight hours a day. So if you had a suction cleaner hooked up to your pool running eight hours a day, you can see that it wears the parts out a lot quicker than the pressure cleaner. And they're really effective. The pools that I have these cleaners in do a great job. They look spotless every week. Um, so they're, they're well designed and they're made for, again for pools with a lot of debris. If you have a covered pool or a pool with a screen, you probably don't need one of these cleaners because you're not going to get a lot of debris in there. But for those areas where there's a lot of trees, I would highly recommend installing 
a pressure side cleaner when you have your pool constructed if you live in an area with trees that would drop a lot of debris in your pool versus having a side port with a suction cleaner. This is my preferred cleaner for you in that case. And then you have the return side cleaners. This particular cleaner works off of your existing pool return lines. The best known of this is the Polaris uh, 360 and they have a new version called the Polaris TR36 which is the black colored Polaris 360. So basically this cleaner will connect to your existing one and a half inch return lines and it'll use your existing pool's return line to propel the cleaner. So there's a few things to keep in mind if you're thinking about getting a return side cleaner like the Polaris 360. Number one, you have to have one and a half inch threaded return lines. Number two, you should have a full size filter. What I mean is I don't think it's going to work effectively if you have a 100 square foot cartridge filter. Uh, more than likely you're going to have problems with a lot of back pressure. I prefer installing them only on pools with a 320 square foot cartridge filter or higher, a 48 square foot D filter or larger, and then a medium to large size sand filter. Because there is some back pressure since you have one return line propelling the cleaner and you may need to plug off one or two more return lines to give it enough flow. So keep that in mind. You also have to have a pump that's powerful enough to push the water through the return lines and propel the cleaner. So 3 fourth horsepower would be my minimum uh, horsepower pump to move a return side cleaner effectively on the bottom of the pool. So some of the drawbacks with this particular cleaner is that it's running constantly while the pool is running. So if you're running your pool 8 hours a day, the return side cleaner will also be running 8 hours a day. Also by restricting some return lines or blocking them off and having the return line being used by the cleaner itself, You'll notice that the pool surface debris will be a lot more prevalent. In other words, the skimmer is not going to work as effectively because normally the return jets are pushing debris towards the skimmer and the skimmer picks up the debris. So since you're utilizing one of the return lines for the cleaner itself and restricting the other ones, the debris will not move towards the skimmer as it normally would. Some of the benefits, of course, of this cleaner is that it's designed just like the pressure cleaners that will pick up large debris, so it has a large opening on the bottom has a large debris bag on top. So if your pool gets a lot of large leaf debris, this is a perfect cleaner for your pool. It won't get jammed up like the suction side cleaner will do. And I have a lot of these on my pool route and they're highly effective and I highly recommend the return side cleaner if you have a pool with a lot of leaf debris or acorns or large debris that would fall to the bottom. Um, this thing is so good. Both the pressure side and return side cleaners have such a large opening that um, you find rats stuck in there. I mean, this is kind of gross, but you find f lizards, rats, um, large rodents. I found some pretty huge things stuck in there. All the pool toys that are on the bottom will get sucked up in here also. Um, so you kind of get the idea how large the opening is on this particular cleaner. So let me go over some common problems that you experience with the pressure side and the return side cleaners. All of them are, this, are basically the same principle. They work off the pressure from the booster pump. So if anything gets stuck inside the cleaner itself, they have tubes in them at the bottom. Uh, these tubes are pretty skinny so that the water is funneled and um, the jet is really powerful. So if anything gets stuck in these tubes, any kind of pebbles or rock or dirt, uh, the cleaner will just stop working completely because it can't really move the water through the line with anything stuck in there. So the best way to prevent anything from getting inside the cleaner tubes itself is that in the wall connector called the quick, quick disconnect, there's supposed to be a screen in there. Uh, Polaris now has inline screens and so does Hayward. So there's a small little mesh metal screen in there that's supposed to catch all that small particle debris. So make sure that your cleaner has a screen installed in either the quick disconnect or in the line so that these small particle, you know, rocks, pebbles and anything like that won't get stuck in the cleaner itself and cause it to jam and stop working. That's your first line of defense is to have that screen intact and in place. Some of the newer cleaners have an internal back of valve like the Trivac 500 and the Pentair Racer and the older cleaners and the Polaris cleaners will have the backup valve on the line itself. So what this is designed to do either internally or externally is to reverse the cleaner out of the step areas or corners so a jet of water will shoot in the opposite direction pulling the cleaner away from the step areas and corners and one thing that happens is that this backup valve goes bad and it continue it'll the gears in there will jam and, and go bad and so it's going to just continue to shoot water out of the backup valve and the cleaner won't move forward it'll just be going backwards so 
An easy fix for that is to replace the backup valve and the cleaner will start moving forward again. The backup valve is only supposed to engage um, every, you know, thir for about 30 seconds every two or three minutes. And so if it's not functioning, it'll just keep running and shooting water out backwards and the cleaner is not going to work. Uh, the Polaris cleaners and the um, Pentair Legend have a float on the back and this float helps keeps it balanced. So, so over time, maybe over several years, uh, the float will crack, fill with water, it'll become heavy and the cleaner will just be on its side all the time and so a simple solution is just take the float off and replace it it's a really easy thing to do as these cleaners are running they have bearings in the wheels all of them have bearings in their wheels that spin the wheels freely over time the bearings wear out uh, some have belts others have uh, like a metal shaft gear shaft that drives them and over time the belt and gear shaft will also wear out and you'll have to change those and on the hose itself, all of these cleaners have swivels on the hoses to help prevent it from tangling. So these swivels are, you know, placed every, you know, 10 feet or so on the hose itself. And these swivels will eventually go bad. They'll kind of get locked up and they won't spin. And then you'll see the hose getting tangled up a lot in the pool. And an easy solution for, the, for that is to replace the swivels. So other than that, they're very reliable. Uh, I went over the major problems you're going to find on these cleaners and they're all very easy to work on. I have several videos to how to take them apart and change the parts inside there to get them working again. And one more note on the Polaris cleaners and Legend cleaner, on the wheels themselves there's some teeth on there and these teeth are going to catch on the gear if you have the, um, the shaft type um, cleaner which is the Polaris 280 and the Electro Legend. Um, those wheels, sometimes will sh the teeth will strip on those wheels and then the cleaner won't spin. So that's an easy thing to fix also. You just change the wheel on those cleaners and everything will be running fine again. Before I move on to the cleaner that I would recommend for you if you're getting a pool built and getting one installed, um, one of the drawbacks with the pressure cleaner is that it does use a separate booster pump, uh, 3 fourth horsepower. Uh, this is 230 volts, so you're using electricity while you're running the cleaner in your pool. Um, so that's one of the drawbacks is that it's not quite energy efficient since you're going to be using a separate pump every day to run the cleaner. Uh, other than that, I, I don't think there's another drawback besides the fact that you're using extra energy to run this particular cleaner. And I already went over the drawback of the return side cleaner. So let me go over the best cleaners that I think are on the market today as far as pressure side cleaners. And I really love the Polaris 280. It's a very old cleaner. It's been around for over 30 years. Uh, it started out with the Polaris 180. It has a very similar design to the 180. It's got the teeth in the wheels that I mentioned. And it's got a shaft that kind of spins. And it's made out of metal. And it has gears. And it catches it and spins the wheels. This is the most reliable cleaner that I can think of. Easy to work on. Um, again, the parts are very long-lasting. And I've had, I have some Polaris 280s in my pool route that are 25 years old, and they're still running great. You just change the parts, and they still run. The body itself is is very resistant to chemicals and is very long-lasting. And you'll find that this particular Polaris model, the 280, is the most long-lasting cleaner. Then you have the Polaris 380, and you have the and you have the black version of that, which is the Polaris TR35. And this is the belt-driven cleaner. It moves faster than the Polaris 280 because it has a belt drive, so it's going to be a little more maneuverable and clean your pool faster than the Polaris 280. It'll actually climb higher too on the walls in most cases than the Polaris 280, but climbing up on the walls is really not necessary for the cleaner. Most of the dirt's on the bottom, and the belt does wear out, I think, quicker than the Polaris 280's um, shaft, drive shaft. And that was the word I was looking for. It has a drive shaft that propels the 280. So the belt on the um, 380 and TR35 will wear out um, quicker than the the drive shaft on the 280. The Polaris 360, the return side cleaner, also also uses the belt. The TR36 also uses the belt drive, and I just prefer the um, drive shaft of the 280 over that. Now the Pentair Electro Legend also uses a drive shaft. Um, it's basically the same exact cleaner as the Polaris, except it has four wheels versus the Polaris three wheels. And that's probably the only main difference. It has the backup valve, the same thing. If you open one up, it's going to look a lot like the Polaris 280. 
And I do have a couple Pentair Legends on my route. They're also very reliable and long-lasting cleaners, and they're also easy to work with. So if you're looking, if you're shopping around for price, and you see a you know Pentair Legend that's a lot cheaper than the Polaris 280, I wouldn't hesitate to buy it. I really like it. Um, the debris bag on top. I prefer the Polaris debris bags. I think they're better quality and they're easier to empty than the Pentair ones. But again, the Legend is a lot like the Polaris 280, and I wouldn't say I wouldn't rec I wouldn't say that you would pick the Polaris 280 over it if if you can save some money on the Legend. It's still a very good cleaner, and I, I like both of them. They're really good. And then you have the higher end cleaners like the Pentair Racer, the Polaris 3900 Sport. These are very high-end pressure cleaners. The uh, Polaris 3900 Sport uses a chain to drive it, and the Penta Racer has the drive shaft also, and it's got just a lot of parts in there that move it along. It's got four wheels also. It's got an internal backup. I actually filmed taking one apart and replacing all the parts. I just haven't had time to edit it. Um, it's quite a job to work on that particular cleaner because it's got a lot of parts in there. Um, but it's actually a very reliable and very effective cleaner too. It's just very high priced along with the Polaris 3900 Sport. So if you're budget conscious, uh, you know, I would just go for Polaris 280 or the Pentair Legend. I wouldn't really think about investing in something for seven or $800. Um, but of course, if you have the money and you want the Cadillac and BMW of pressure cleaners, definitely look at the Racer and the Polaris 3900 Sport. They're both great cleaners. They just have a hefty price tag to go along with it. And then you have the Hayward Trivac 500. Now this cleaner has gone through a couple phases. Um, they have a new version out right now that's really good. It's a lot like the Phantom. It just has an inter has an internal backup valve, and it's got just a different whole different look to it. It's got a huge cleaning path, and it's got a debris bag on top that's really good. And it's a, it's a really different cleaner, and I think it works really effectively. It just doesn't have the market share of the other two brands. So I think in the coming months, you're going to see the Trivac 500 being pushed a lot more in the market. It's going to have a lot of revamped internal parts to make it a lot more efficient. So I would definitely look into that one, too, if you're in the market for a pressure cleaner. But I'll go back to my default cleaner, the Polaris 280, which I really think is uh, the best choice for your budget. And as far as efficiency, it's the best cleaner of the pressure side cleaners that I have on my pool route that I've used over the years. And I think most pool guys out, out there will agree with me that the Polaris 280 is the workhorse of pressure cleaners. And it's the one that probably most of them will purchase for their customers and install. And one thing you need to know also is that the wall connector is universal. So all of the cleaners, Hayward, Pentair, Polaris, all the generic cleaners, will fit into the existing threaded wall fitting that the 3 4 horsepower booster pump shoots water out of. Uh, you just need to get a different uh, quick disconnect that comes with each cleaner. Um, I, what I do is I use whatever's in the wall. If uh, there's a Legend or a Polaris cleaner, I just use all the parts in there and I just change a quick disconnect. I leave the threaded fitting in there and everything works fine. So don't worry about if you're going from one brand to the other. They're all universal, so you're not going to have any kind of replumbing to do. Um, everything is pretty easy. And so to recap, I highly recommend having a pressure side cleaner installed when you're having your pool constructed. If again you live in an area where there's a lot of trees over your pool, and if you have a pool that's screened or covered all the time, it may not be necessary to have this cleaner installed, but it is very effective. If you don't have a dedicated booster pump and you want to upgrade to a pressure type cleaner, the Polaris 360 or TR36 is a great cleaner that will fit into your existing one and a half inch return lines and it'll use your existing system without a booster pump. I wasn't sure if I was clear on that earlier, but there's no booster pump needed with that particular cleaner. It uses your existing return lines. This is a great way to upgrade to a return pressure side cleaner without having to replumb or install a booster pump to your pool. So that's about it on the pressure side cleaners, return side cleaners. If you have any questions about this particular cleaner, or any comments, you can leave those on the YouTube version of this podcast. You can also email me directly. So thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show.